Hello, it's Taylor again with another update on some of my robotics projects. Um, so what I wanted to show you today is a new uh, smaller actuator uh, that I've been developing. So if you've seen my previous videos with Rover, um, you've seen that the, uh, the actuators inside of each of Rover's wheels are pretty large. Uh, they use a $60 Turnigy SK3 63mm diameter motor. Um, and it's just a lot of power to move around, it's heavy, um, and it's total overkill for um, a lot of applications. So um, in an effort to make something that takes less time to print, can be printed on a smaller printer, um, and uh, is generally better sized for a, a lot of smaller applications, I, I made a different sized actuator. So I started here with the uh, 4114 uh, motor. This is a multi-star 4114 320kV. You can see this is just a snug fit on right now, um, but I've made this printable part and uh, inside the motor here, this is the assembled actuator, um, and, and, and these are the parts. So, so these are all the parts. You've got, uh, I'll, I'll go back to this in a moment, but this is the ring gear assembly and housing, and I do think I can make this shorter. Um, two bearings mount where my finger is here, uh, this shaft goes through this way. Um, these gears drop in after the shaft is in and engage with those teeth there. And then this gear engages thusly, forming a planetary gear train. Um, it's a, uh, you know, I can't remember the reduction. It was f somewhere between four and five to one gear reduction. Um, I'll have to put that in the description. but. If you look here, this is printable on a normal printer without supports. I printed this on a Monoprice Mini Delta. It's a $160 printer I got on Black Friday. Um, and uh, this particular print I didn't use, so it's got some, some junk in between the teeth. But this allows you to drop a screw in sideways and then engage into those teeth. And it worked, uh, or engage into the threads. So this actually works really well. I was really happy with a quick, simple, printable solution to mount a gear rigidly to this motor or a similar motor that has this this prop adapter. Um, and this motor was $28 on Hobby King. It was on sale, so it normally lists for more, but I found that they're being sold for about $28, $30 uh, in several places right now, so that seems to be the going rate. Um, this mounts to this simple plate with these, um, the motor leads will slip through that hole as you'd expect, and then this mounts to here. There is, very importantly, an opening to the back of the shaft, and I've also designed um, an encoder mount. Um, so I'm using a, 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 I can't remember, AS5047, I'll have to put that in the comments too, but a, a, an 8,000 counts per revolution uh, SPI-based digital encoder. Um, so you'll be able to do, uh, on this motor controller here, which is called the VESC, V-E-S-C, a totally open source motor controller designed in KiCad. Um, it supports something called field-oriented control and that lets you do um, control at the lowest speeds. So in robotics sometimes you need a motor to just spin like this. Uh, a lot of the motor controllers are designed for quadcopters that don't need to do you know some controlled precise movement but this motor controller does allow you to do controlled precise movement. Um, this one is a Maytech from eBay. It was $110. You can also get some from Hobby King for $86, not sold under the VESC name, but um, eSkate, I think is what they call it. Um, so I've sh showed you generally how this goes together. All of these were printed on a $160 printer. However, my printer does have dimensional accuracy issues. Um, so this one, uh, the, the bearings didn't even remotely fit. It was about one millimeter undersized on the whole, which was really significant. So I printed this on my modified Monoprice Maker Select V2. Um, this is made out of PETG, which I really like, and it was printed with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, so you can see the tracks are really big. Um, I, I really like that. And I was surprised that the 1.2 millimeter nozzle was able to print these teeth. Um, uh, it's a smaller tooth profile than Rover, and I didn't intend for it to be printable on my uh, 1.2 millimeter nozzle. However, it works great. I'm really happy about that. And the, the Monoprice Maker Select V2 has much better dimensional accuracy than the Monoprice Mini Delta. Um, there, it, it, you know, it would be in theory possible to calibrate the Mini Delta, 
Mount Price hasn't released any information on how to do that as far as I was able to find. But uh, I'm still looking for that and I think it'll be possible to calibrate that and get that printer printing this. However, um, another improvement from this actuator over Rover is that the motor is completely sealed. So I am concerned about cooling and uh, you know that, that might end up being an issue. However, aside from these holes, it, it's completely sealable. So this hole could be made a little smaller and a rubber gasket could be put over it. And then this is gonna have a flat circuit board over it. So that's gonna seal this completely. And then that means that this is a little 3D printed actuator package. You could throw mud and sand and, and probably some water at it splashing. And you know, you're not really gonna, gonna uh, get sand in the motor, which is a concern with Rover, I still haven't solved. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the actuator, and of course we want to spin it up and see how it goes, so I'll do that now. So as with Rover, the gear teeth are really noisy. Uh, they're still straight cut gears. I do want to look at cubicle gears. Um, on shape doesn't have a nice twist feature that I found, so I'm still trying to figure out how to make a good helical planetary gearbox in on shape. Um, however, this is the motor. And personally, I feel like, uh, okay, if I really hold it, I am able to, to fault the ESC here. Um, uh, with the encoder on the back, you will, uh, you'll see much stronger torque here. It's able to push a lot harder at you. Um, I also haven't set the limits in my ESC for this particular motor, so um, it's a little more likely to fault. And we are only running on a two cell. Uh, you can run this on a six cell. That's what Rover runs off of. But actually the two cell works really well. So let's put it back up. And that's not the fastest, so I'll move it to the fastest speed now. We can go a little slower. So if we try to go much slower than this, uh, we're going to run into problems without this magnetic sensor. So in the future, uh, I've ordered some circuit boards from Seed Studio for this magnetic sensor. Um, that'll go on here, and then this thing is going to be a really nice precision actuator. You're going to be able to position this thing to within a couple of degrees, uh, basically to within the backlash of, of this here. Uh, you'll be able to set a very precise velocity, uh, and in my Raspberry Pi based uh, control program, I have an acceleration profiler, so you can set acceleration limits and specify a motor velocity, and the profiler will move the motor to that velocity, uh, respecting the acceleration limits. So, uh, I will be uh, posting some more videos in the future where I talk about how to, uh, how to hook up the Raspberry Pi to this. And... Sorry, I just thought I would cut that off. I will post some more videos in the future about how to hook up the Raspberry Pi to this, and uh, in general, uh, I'm kind of working towards a tutorial that would uh, clearly and fully describe uh, everything that you would need to do precision motion control with a Raspberry Pi, a VESC, uh, a brushless motor like this, uh, the encoder that I'm working on, which is, uh, you, you can also get a similar board from DigiKey, you don't have to just buy mine. Um, although mine has the right plug for the VESC, I just didn't see any of those available, so I'm going to try to get those uh, available for sale on Amazon. We'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, just, uh, uh, oh, and this is a single reduction planetary. If you made it longer, you could make it a double stage or a triple stage. So it's, uh, I think, you know, like I said, it's a nominally five to one gear reduction, but if you put a two stage, it would be 25 to one, uh, and a three stage would be 125 to one. Uh, if you get to the three stage, 125 to one, uh, that starts to be really interesting for something like a robot arm. Um, if you put 125 to one gear reduction on this motor, you're really gonna have a lot of torque you're going to be able to move something like a, a real robot arm, um, and uh, that'll be something that'll be really good to look at. Uh, oh, also wanted to mention this is designed in Onshape. Onshape.com is a free CAD program. It's not open source, but I do like that um, it's freely accessible to anybody as long as you don't mind your models being public, and it does run in Linux, which is something that I really like. So you can go to the web link for this. I'll put that in the video description as well. Um, and you can just fork and edit the files. Uh, all of my hardware that I'm currently working on, uh, this specifically and, and other things that I mentioned, are licensed CC0. So this is licensed CC0. You can do anything you want with this information. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, very, very happy for this. 
Uh, I should also mention that I envision doing some, some robots on the farm with something like this. So I'm looking at uh, how you might be able to grow food um, and putting uh, several actuators and a big 3D printed assembly that's doing this and that um, is uh, you know something you're gonna, that, that, that's something that I would envision being, being hopefully useful on a farm. So maybe you're gonna harvest some lettuce with a little lettuce harvester or something and you need packages like this. So that's kind of what I'm working towards. All right, that's all I've got to say. Thanks for watching, and if you want more info on my exploits, uh, go check out reboot.love. Thanks.